Hello. Uh, can you see me? Am I on? Yes? No? <laughs> Go. Uh, well, welcome to our cooking class. Uh, I'm Giuliano Hazan, and uh, here to help me is uh, my daughter, Michaela, who is always our cameraman, and uh, my wife, Lael. Uh, she's going to be watching along, and she'll be watching for your comments, because uh, if you have any questions during the class, please uh, write them in as a comment, and I'll be happy to answer them. So today, I'm going to be making a, a summer meal, let's say. Uh, two summer dishes. We're going to make a classic Tuscan bread salad with cucumbers and onions and uh, tomatoes, and also a rather unusual pasta dish. Uh, it's uh, linguine with cantaloupe melon. Now, I know this sounds really, really strange and unusual, but it's a delicious dish. So uh, I'm gonna start right away with the pasta dish. I have some butter here, which I'm just going to put in my skillet and get hot. I'll turn it on. Here we go. And, uh, and here's our cantaloupe melon. And uh, I've cut some up already, but I wanted to show you how I remove the rind, which to me makes it really easy. First, I cut off both, both ends of the melon. Here we go. Actually, this melon looks a lot more orange than the one I cut before. Maybe we'll use this one instead. Let's see. So I like to remove the rind from the whole melon rather than slicing it up and then removing the rind. And I would do this even if I'm, I'm serving, uh, you know, sliced cantaloupe melon because it's uh, just so much easier this way. You just go all the way around like this. And what you want to make sure is that you're cutting down to the orange flesh so that uh, you don't have white or green parts still on the outside. And once you've gone all the way around, you should look and you see that I have a little bit here that I have to trim off. So you can always fix that. Here we go. Okay, good. And now I'm going to cut it in half so I can remove the seeds. Here we go. Get rid of all the seeds. Now, this unusual dish is uh, a dish that uh, I discovered with my, along with my parents in Venice. It was at a restaurant that, unlike most restaurants in Venice, uh, had neither risotto uh, nor seafood on the menu but it had some very interesting, unusual dishes, and this was one of them. And uh, the restaurant was called Arcimboldo. Uh, and uh, some of you may be familiar with the artist Arcimboldo, who is from Bologna. Arcimboldo is known for creating uh, portraits uh, using fruit. Well, not real fruit, but he, he would paint the fruit and vegetables and create uh, faces and uh, and people doing that. So uh, it's you know a little unusual and uh, and quirking. And that was exactly what this restaurant was. So I have my butter here, which has melted, and you can hear it sizzling along. At least I think you can hear it. And uh, to know when the butter is hot, what you want to do is. Uh, you'll, you'll see the foam that it creates. And when you see that the foam starts to subside and it doesn't sound quite so uh, uh, crinkly, let's say, uh, then, uh, then that's the time that you put in the uh, whatever it is that you're cooking. And in this case, it will be our melon. And it's almost ready. Cut a little bit more from this one and then I'll use some of the one that I had cut up already. You do want to cut it first into smaller chunks like this so that it will cook down. In the end, you'll be able to see some pieces here and there, but a lot of it will just cook down. In fact, when, uh, when we serve this to our friends, uh, it's a lot of fun to uh, ask them if they can guess what, uh, 
what the secret ingredient in this dish is. And a lot of times they can't. Okay, so I'm putting in the melon and maybe Michaela, you could come over so that they can see inside the pan. Here we go. There, that should be enough. And some salt. With this dish, uh, you do want to season fairly aggressively, let's say, because since uh, the fruit is sweet, you want to counter it uh, with the salt and pepper. So we're gonna let this cook for a little bit, maybe 15 minutes or so until it starts to break down. And while this is cooking, and Michaela, maybe you can come back now to the front. Uh, while this is cooking, I'm going to work on the salad. The, the salad is called panzanella, and it is typically a Tuscan salad, although sometimes you see it prepared uh, in uh, Sicily as well. Some people uh, say it was uh, first created by uh, this duke whose name was Alfio Panzanella. He was a uh, vegetable merchant. Uh, but basically it's uh, what you would call a poor man's salad because it's, uh, it's something that you would make with yesterday's bread. And what you do with yesterday's bread is you soak it. And I've been soaking this already for a little bit. And you can see that it's just full of water now, and you can squeeze it out. Uh, so that's one thing that you have to prepare, and you let it soak for about 20, 25 minutes. Uh, then I have some red onion, uh, and I don't like the onion to be too strong, so I also soak that in cold water for about 20 minutes or so, and that makes it a little bit less sharp. So let me show you how I cut it. You take your red onion, and you're going to cut off the top of the onion. Once you have a flat side, you can turn the onion so it doesn't roll around and cut it in half like this. We can cut off the root as well. And then we can remove the skin, remove all of the skin, even, you know, maybe an extra layer that might be a little bit wilted and hard. And then uh, what we want to do is we want to do some nice, very thin slices, and we want to slice it crosswise, not lengthwise, but crosswise. It, uh, onion actually ends up being a little bit more tender when it's cut crosswise. And so you hold it with your fingers kind of curled in, you know, you don't want them sticking out. And then use your knife, and this is really important, you want to use your knife in a slicing motion. So in other words, don't just go straight down with the knife, but instead, slide it back and forth like this. So use the whole length of the knife, and that way you can make very nice thin slices like this. Okay, so I will use this onion later for something else because I have mine soaking already for the panzanella salad. Here we go. I'm gonna just quickly give it a little bit of a toss to the melon. There we go. And then uh, we have uh, cucumber. I like using uh, what they call the English cucumber, or sometimes they call it uh, seedless cucumber. Uh, it's the cucumber that comes wrapped in plastic. And uh, the nice thing about it is that uh, the skin is very thin, uh, so you don't have to peel it. And it's not completely seedless, but the seeds are small and rather unobtrusive. And we're going to slice this fairly thin as well. I'm going to cut off the end and get rid of that. And then do maybe quarter inch slices like this. And we only need about, oh, half of the cucumber, let's say, like this. And again, you see I'm using the knife in that uh, slicing motion. Uh, just a little bit more. Here we go. Okay, now, now our cucumber can go in our salad bowl here. We can start assembling everything.
Here we go. And now I'm going to uh, do the tomatoes. And so use the best tomatoes you can get, you know. Uh, where I'm in Florida and uh, ironically, it's not a place for the best tomatoes. If you're in New Jersey and you have fabulous summer tomatoes, those are the best. And we're going to kind of cut the tomatoes in, in cubes. Uh, I'm gonna cut it in half first, right through the core there, so that afterwards it's easy for me to cut out the core, like this, one side and the other. Do the same thing on, for the other half. And then I'm going to uh, cut it and it's, it's actually easier, even though it's, it rolls around if you put it with the skin side down, it's easier to cut from the cut side because cutting like this, you have to cut through the skin. And even if you have a, you know, I have a very sharp knife, but it's just much easier to cut from the cut side because it cuts right through very easily. So we're going to do chunks like this. Let's cut this in half. You know, I'd say approximately half of an inch or so. And by the way, the recipes uh, for uh, both of these dishes will be available to you. I am going to uh, post on Facebook a link to our website where you'll be able to get the, uh, the recipes. Uh, the panzanella recipe is actually one of my mother's recipes. The, the melon recipe uh, was originally written by my mother as well. I just uh, slightly adapted it, but I'm doing the panzanella uh, recipe, the salad recipe, exactly like she wrote it. And if you've just joined us, uh, my name is Giuliano Hazan, and uh, I'm preparing two summer dishes here, uh, a bread, Tuscan bread salad, which is this one right here, called panzanella, and some linguine with, uh, with cantaloupe melon. So let's add the tomatoes. And I think I should do another, maybe another half tomato. Let's cut away the core. And let's cut it like this, like this. Again, in chunks, about half an inch thick. Okay, here we go. I'm gonna toss the uh, melon one more time here. starting to brown a little bit on the bottom and that's fine. So I think that's good for the tomatoes and the uh, cucumber. Uh, the red onion, I'm going to lift it out of the water, shake the excess water out and add it like this. This was half a red onion. And then the bread. Also the bread, you squeeze, I know this seems really strange, but you actually squeeze the bread like this so that the water comes out, and then you crumble it into the salad. And so it, uh, it gives the salad, you know, heft and body. It makes it more substantial. And there's many variations that you can find with panzanella. If you wanted to make it, you know, a single meal, you might want to add perhaps some, uh, some protein. You could add some really good canned tuna. You could add some uh, uh, hard-boiled eggs, if you like. And the bread, by the way, is, uh, is only the part inside. So this was the bread that I used, and so I cut out all the crust and just used the part inside. Remember to squeeze out the water from the bread, otherwise you're gonna have a very watery salad and you don't want that. Okay, so now we have to make the dressing. And if you look up panzanella on the internet, because everybody looks on the internet now, of course, you're on the internet, 
uh, you'll find that uh, most recipes are a little bit different from this one. Most recipes just use a simple olive oil and vinegar and salt dressing. Uh, a lot of recipes add basil. And so we don't have basil. And our dressing is a little bit different. And in fact, I'm going to be making the dressing in a food processor. Here we go. Okay, all set. So we have some anchovies. We have some capers. Now these capers are actually preserved in salt instead of vinegar. They come in a jar like this. I don't know how well you can see it, but they're completely covered with salt. And um, the advantage to capers preserved in salt are, is that um, the salt just acts as a preservative. It doesn't add any flavor. Uh, whereas the ones that are preserved in vinegar inevitably taste of vinegar. Uh, but it's important with the capers, which I already put in there, uh, to wash the salt off completely because otherwise they're going to be much, much too salty. Uh, so we have that. We have some red wine vinegar. This is a, a wonderful vinegar from uh, outside of Verona, the Valpolicella region. It's actually where uh, we run a cooking school in Italy, which uh, we're looking forward to doing again next year. What do I need to do? I'm supposed to show the label. It's a tiny label, but here it is. <laughs> Uh, this is a vinegar that uh, we import, and it's uh, made with Valpolicella wine. And then uh, once it turns to vinegar, it's aged in brandy oak barrels for 36 months. So it's really wonderful, very rich and wonderful. So I've added the uh, vinegar. I'm going to put some salt and a clove of garlic. So that's something else that my mother added. And I'm going to use my little toy that I have here. It's uh, uh, a rubber tube. You put the garlic inside and you press and roll. When you hear a crack, it's peeled. Lots of fun. But I do need to cut off the little end where it was attached. Okay, so let's run the processor with this stuff in it. And then we're going to add some olive oil. I'm going to push down everything. Turn this down just a little bit. And I'm going to add some extra virgin olive oil. Uh, the olive oil is actually also something that uh, we import, and it's also from the Veneto, just east of Verona. Uh, it's a wonderful, very well-balanced olive oil, uh, and uh, if you take our course in Italy, we'll take you to the, right, uh, the olive oil mill where it's produced, and it's a small family operation. I'm going to pulse. And we have our dressing. So now, I'm going to pour it over the salad. Panzanella, although it's, it's known as a Tuscan salad, is actually also made in Sicily. And in fact, uh, in Sicily, you're more likely to find uh, this dressing here because uh, 
uh, capers are from Sicily for one thing. And in Sicily you'll find things made with anchovies much more easily too. I'm going to add a little extra olive oil as well. Okay, let's put this over here. And one of the important ingredients in any salad is actually patience. Because you have to be patient to toss it thoroughly. You know, my, my father used to say that uh, a good salad has to be tossed at least 34 times. And I'm going to continue with the cantaloupe sauce. And we'll just set this aside until we're ready for it. And the dirty dishes magically disappeared. So, if you'd like Michaela to come over here, you can see that the, the melon has kind of cooked down and it's become almost a little caramelized and I'm kind of squishing it down a bit so that it'll break up a little bit. And it's time to put our pasta in. So I'm going to first add some salt to my boiling water. Nice generous amount of salt. It's important to salt the water well so that the pasta will actually taste of, of what it's made and you know good quality pasta uh, really has the flavor of the wheat that it's made from. This is a uh, single wheat variety pasta that's made with a wheat called kamut uh, and uh, kamut is becoming more and more popular in Italy you'll find pizza uh, restaurants, pizzeria that uh, use exclusively kamut, uh, and uh, a lot of pasta is made with it now as well. Okay, so I'm going to turn the melon down a little bit. Let me put the timer for the linguine because otherwise I will inevitably forget about them. Now we add the two sort of uh, um, secret ingredients to this. One of the secret ingredients is uh, tomato paste and I like to use tomato paste uh, in a tube because uh, I don't use that much of it and it's so much easier to close the tube and keep it in the fridge like this and it'll last a long time. Uh, so in a tube rather than using it in a can. And but that should be good but I don't know teaspoon, two teaspoons, something like that. The recipes actually do have measurements, but uh, I, I never actually measure when I cook, only if I'm making a dessert. So you mix in the tomato paste, and that actually starts to change the color, which makes it a little bit more challenging for your guests to guess what the secret ingredient is in this pasta sauce. Important when you're cooking pasta to periodically give it a turn. That. So the other secret ingredient is some lemon juice. I'm going to cut a lemon in half like this and squeeze some lemon in it. Here's my thing. The lemon juice won't actually make it taste lemony, but it intensifies the flavor of, of the melon. And again, I'm breaking it up a little bit. And then our final ingredient here is some heavy cream.
people always are concerned and worried that uh, if you add heavy cream and uh, whatever you're cooking is cooking too high, the cream with curdle, it actually will not. In fact, uh, if you're not using heavy cream and you decided, well, you know, I want to make it lighter, I'll use half and half, that will curdle. Uh, milk always will curdle, but he real heavy cream will not. And Julia Child always used to say that uh, if you're afraid of butter, use cream. And that's because, you know, butter is made from cream, but it takes a tremendous amount of cream to make a little bit of butter. So when I'm using this much cream, it will probably, you know, be maybe that much butter. Not very much at all. Okay. Uh, we need to cook the cream down so that it reduces. We don't want a liquidy cream and finish cooking the pasta. In the meantime, it's going to take a few more minutes. So uh, let me tell you what I'm going to finish the dish with at the end. Uh, we have some uh, uh, Parmigiano Reggiano and I say the full name of it because it's really important when you buy Parmigiano Reggiano that you make sure that it's the real thing. And it's the real thing if it has that full name, Parmigiano Reggiano, printed on the rind and that you ask whoever you're buying it from if it is Parmigiano Reggiano. It's the king of cheeses uh, and they say the, the cheese of kings. Uh, by the way, it's another uh, one of our field trips to go visit a uh, Parmigiano Reggiano factory and see its production from the very beginning, from when the milk comes in until in the end it has aged two years and it's ready to eat uh, and we break open the wheel and taste it and it's really wonderful. So uh, I'm going to toss the pasta and then grate some cheese on top of it, but I'm not going to grate the cheese ahead of time because otherwise it'll dry out and it won't be any good. Uh, never ever buy grated cheese in a container. Uh, my mother always used to say that if you were going to do that, it would be much cheaper to go to a lumber yard and get some sawdust instead. Uh, so definitely don't do that. Okay, so here's our panzanella salad. And I don't know if I had really done the 24 turns with it. So I'm going to toss it a little bit more. And so you see the bread kind of breaks up everywhere, but it, it really soaks up that dressing. And uh, so you can really taste it wonderfully well. So let's dish it out and we'll have our first dish here. Uh, anybody ask any questions? No? Don't forget, ask questions because I'm happy to answer them. Uh, now, unfortunately, we have not been able to do uh, cooking classes in person in our home, but usually uh, here at this counter, we do hands-on cooking classes. And I'm hoping that uh, next month, uh, can, you, can you see? Yeah. Next month, we'll be able to start up again. And if you go to uh, my website, it's julianohazan.com. We put up a schedule of classes through uh, next winter. And uh, I hope that uh, you will uh, join us one day. Uh, people have a lot of fun. We prepare a whole meal. We do uh, what? They're exclusive and COVID safe, my wife says. Uh, <laughs> uh, what we do is uh, we prepare a full meal. We'll do a, either a pasta, risotto, then we do a meat or fish dish, a vegetable, and a dessert. Uh, and then we sit down at the table and we eat what we prepared along with uh, some white wine or red wine. Actually, red wine usually. Uh, and yes, we do make sure that uh, we're keeping everything very clean, uh, that we're keeping people apart. In fact, uh, we're going to be doing half the number of people that we usually take. Uh, so let me taste the linguine to see if they are ready. By the way, you know, some people uh, think that linguine and fettuccine are interchangeable. It's kind of hard to grab something. 
uh, but actually they're not. Uh, for one thing, uh, linguine are not flat. They're actually slightly convex. Hmm. Not quite there yet, but close. So they are uh, slightly convex because lingua in Italian means tongue. So they really are like the shape of a tongue. And the other thing is that uh, linguine are made with flour and water pasta, whereas fettuccine are usually always made with egg pasta. And when you make egg pasta to create shapes, you roll it out, which stretches it and makes it uh, very porous and absorbent and much more delicate. Whereas with flour and water pasta, the dough is pushed through dyes. And so it's much more compact. So it's a very different uh, consistency. And normally we do uh, flour and water pastas with more robustly flavored sauces. You know, the melon sauce could do, go with egg pasta, but it's almost a little bit too rich uh, for it. Now, I'm going to actually turn it off. I'm not going to make Michaela move. I'll just go like this. Can you see? Okay. And I will get myself ready to drain. And here's our bowl for pasta. Uh, there we go. One, two, I always count to ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And it's ready. Even though the timer didn't go off, it is ready. Never cook pasta just with a timer, always taste it. Drain it and do not rinse it. Worst thing you can do. But one thing you'll, you'll make it cold, but also you're gonna wash away the coating of starch on the pasta and that's really important. It helps the sauce cling wonderfully to it. Shake, shake, shake so that it's not going to be watery. You know, people always ask if you should add the pasta water to your sauce. And most, most of the time you should not because you don't want to make it watery. You want it to be nice and rich and concentrated. So we add the melon, which doesn't really look like melon anymore. Pasta is ready. Okay, and oh, I have to get uh, something to stir that with. Here we go. So first, stir it well so it gets nice and coated. And then we're going to add some cheese, grate it right on top. Like this. Okay. And then we stir that in and it's ready. Ah, it smells so good. Well, you know what we're having for dinner. And I'm gonna put some here, and Michaela, for all her work, gets to come and have some first. And I hope she likes it. Put a little bit of the melon on top. And we show it to them first. Yes, can you see? Yes. Okay, well, there it is. And I'm going to taste a little bit of the salad because I haven't had the salad in a long time. You know, I remember once uh, when I was little, I went with my parents to Arezzo and had the most incredible tomatoes that I've ever had in my life. Mm. I'll never forget those. It's hot. I'm it's sorry. It's good. It's hot. It's good, though. Mm. Mm. It's good. I recommend it. Well, thank you for joining us. Remember, I will post on Facebook 
a link to the recipes. And if you do think of questions afterwards, post them on Facebook, or you can go to my website and email me directly. It's julianohazan.com. Thanks so much for joining us. Buon appetito.